Have you ever wondered why the guys who repair amps don't have input in how amplifiers are made? Well, welcome to Trauma Car Audio with the Concussion Series, specifically the TCS 2000D, which is the one we're looking at today. You can see retails for $579 on their website. Check the video description link below if you want to pick one of these up. But we got one of these in from Trauma Car Audio. Test it out, see how it does. So let's take it out of the box. You can see the ratings right here, 800 watts, four ohms, 1200 watts at two ohms, 2000 watts at one ohm. Those are all 12.6 volts. The amp comes with the usual base remote. You can see the cable here is about 16 feet. Comes with some screws and also the base remote control, which we'll talk about this later. It's not my favorite one I've ever seen. And here's the amp itself. It's kind of big looking for a 2K. You can see here compared to my hand, amp is a little bit skinny, kind of long as far as the true dimensions go. 19.7 inches or 500 millimeters by 7.1 inches or 181 millimeters. And as far as the height goes, 2 inches or 53 millimeters. Now from the exterior, the Trauma amp doesn't really look that much different than another amplifier that you may have seen before. But we like the logo, it looks kind of cool, and it has this Bluetooth logo. What's all that about? Well, we'll find out here shortly. You can see here on the input side, we have RCAs. We have four outputs, and we have inputs for left and right, a Bluetooth on, line in to Bluetooth switch. We're going to talk about that more. And then you can see we have gain control, bass control, phase control, low-pass filter, and subsonic filter. All good stuff, and as well as remote bass knob input there which uh, has the real nice connection like a telephone jack rj11 style then we have eight gauge for the speaker outputs and one o for the power and remote and then we have protect led there on the end now you notice that my amp came with one of the mounting feet bent up it's a little bit of a bummer but it's enough talking about the amp let's fire up the good old amp dyno find out how this thing performs and we'll talk a little bit later about some more of the features. Now first up we'll do the 4 ohm test. The amp is rated 800 watts at 12.6 volts. All the tests here will be 40 hertz. Here you can see certified we got 923 at 14.3 volts. So very nice. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point of the amp. Get a little bit more power. 1054 14.36. Again Nicely over the rated power. Dynamically, got over a thousand watts as well. 1,045 watts, 14.4 volts. Now, as far as the efficiency goes, we measured 76% or so, but the clamp jumped from 60 amps all the way up to 87, so it may actually be quite a bit more efficient than that. Two ohms, the amp is rated 1200 watts at 12.6 volts. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD, almost 1,500 watts, 14.46, very nice. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point, again, 40 hertz for all these tests, 1,818 watts. Dynamic burst, 40 hertz, again, well over 1,800 watts, actually 1,927 watts at 14.6, got a little bit higher voltage there. Check out the efficiency here, 90% at two ohms. That tells me that four ohm measurement was probably off due to the amp clamp. All right, so let's move on to the one ohm test where the amps rated 2000 watts at 12.6 volts. Start off with certified, 40 hertz, here we go. Oh yes, yeah boy. Over 2400 watts there on the certified test. So we tried it. Run it again just to make sure that wasn't a fluke. So let's try the certified test again. And you can see 2340 at 14.1, so very close. That is a very good test for 2000 watt amp. Uncertified 2866 watts right at 14 volts. And then dynamic at one ohm. This one will wake you up. This amp has got some dynamic headroom, my friends. 3500 plus watts at 14.52. The efficiency at one ohm was around 70%. 
which is about what's expected for a Class D amp, but very good overall. All right, here are the results on the dyno sheet. You can pause this if you'd like to see it. We just pretty much went over all the tests that I'm showing here. 923 at 4 ohm certified, 1498 2 ohm certified, and 2405 at 1 ohm certified. So it did all the numbers plus more. Now let's take a look at the amp. We're going to flip the amp over. You can see it has these riser feet in the center. I was told these are to help kind of lift the amp up. In addition, helps with the airflow. So you'll see that when we get the amp open here, it does have a fan inside to help keep the amp nice and cool. And we'll talk about some of the other features according to the Trauma website. Double wrap insulation on inductor legs. It has a Bluetooth card, all Korean capacitors, raised feet for improved airflow, thicker heat sink, and it's an exclusive Trauma Antmedics design. So you should not see another design like this. Overall, it looks really nice on the inside from what we can see here. It has really thick 8 gauge wires on the inside and has beefy capacitors here that are actually labeled with Trauma Car Audio on them. And the circuit board, of course, has Trauma Car Audio as well. Now, the transistors have these old school style uh, clips that are, I used to see these in the Z Audio amplifier, so it's, it's interesting to see those in new amps. The rail caps, 100 volt, 2200 microfarad, but they are 85 degrees Celsius, which is kind of odd. And the input filter caps, 25 volts, 2200 microfarad for those. So we've seen amps with Bluetooth before, but not subwoofer specific amps, like the Sony 6 channel amp has it. This one actually has a switch to go from line in to Bluetooth. And when you flip the switch, turn the amp on, which I'm going to do here, and get out your cell phone and go to your Bluetooth mode, and you'll see the light blinking. It blinks about every second there. That means it's trying to pair. And then here's the devices at the bottom. You'll see trauma. So we'll touch that. Connects up really quick. So we're connected to the amp. Very simple. Now guys, we lost a good guy here in the last couple weeks, Christopher Walker, who was the owner of Loud Tool. Great guy, he battled cancer for about 10 years and so sad to see him go. I leave links in the description below if you wanna help the family out, if you wanna see his testament, very cool stuff. But we still use his Loud Tools here. Hopefully someone in his family can help those go on. These help adjust your gains. They're 3D printed. They don't, you don't have to worry about getting shocked with the amp. Very cool. We miss you, Chris. All right, I've got this trauma amp hooked up to the phone here via Bluetooth. I'm going to turn the amp off here. Okay, the amp is off. And the phone just went to pause. Now I'm going to turn it back on. Let's see if it reconnects to the Bluetooth. Cool. Connected quick within like five seconds or so. That's good.
right, so the amp sounded great power in the Savard HiQ8s in that box. It just, uh, yeah, controlled them really well. Sounded great. So let's check out the things we like about the amp. The power output, of course, it did its power and more. Has a thick heat sink to help get away that heat. Korean capacitors. Design input by Amp Medics, which is always good. Has high efficiency. Bluetooth connectivity, a variable subsonic filter, and it includes a bass remote. We actually have more good stuff here. Tiffany style RCAs, beefy 10 inputs. The input options, full range Bluetooth outputs. So if you connect it to Bluetooth, you can actually use the outputs full range. The amp stayed cool, it is overbuilt. Things that could be better, we're getting kind of picky here. Single speaker output, it's kind of large for a 2KW amp. Has 85 degrees Celsius caps, wish they were 105 degrees. Price is kind of high, but hey, you're buying quality here, friends. The bass remote, I really didn't like the way it worked. It's kind of hard to turn. That's just a personal preference, but you can see. Uh, the mounting tabs were bent when I received it. Again, we're being picky here, but I just wanted to let you know. Overall, I was very impressed with the amp. I like the operation. I like the way you can use Bluetooth. You can use your phone as your head unit pretty much and have outputs going to your other amplifiers very cool you can see here with speakers over 2000 watts the internals are beefy the power of the subwoofer is great so overall thumbs up for this amp check the video description if you like to purchase one thanks as always for watching commenting liking my videos patreon.com slash old school stereo and a special thanks go out to Travis, Stewart, Jesus Tires, Tomcat, Vinyl, Big D, I'm out of here! As you can see, we have nothing going into the RCA inputs here on the trauma. You can see the Bluetooth light blinking once every few seconds. We have it connected up to this old iPhone that I use for testing. I have the Dino Track number four, which is a 40 hertz test for the certified test. We're gonna try to use this phone straight into the amp to do one of the Dino tests. See how this works, <laughs> see what we get. All right, 2206, 14.15 volts. Again, that was just using Bluetooth from the phone. Not sure that that's the cleanest way to do this, but it's very interesting.